So the case stands, and under all the passion of the parties and the cries of battle lie the two chief moving causes of the struggle. Union means so many millions a year lost to the South. Secession means the loss of the same millions to the North. The love of money is the root of this, as of many other evils. The quarrel between the North and the South is, as it stands, solely a fiscal quarrel. Charles Dickens, All the Year Round, December 28, 1861. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we will talk about Camp Allegheny, West Virginia, Pocahontas County, December 13, 1861. And I do apologize for any massacring of names from that area. Please let me know in the comments if I've made a mistake. I've had some really good feedback in the past. In December of 1861, Confederate Colonel Edward Johnson's men took control of the Allegheny Mountain. This was done so the Confederates could attempt to cover that very same Staunton Parkersburg turnpike that so much fighting had been done over earlier. The U.S. sent Brigadier General Robert H. Milroy back down from Cheap Mountain yet again to stop the Confederates. On December 13th, Milroy and his U.S. soldiers attacked Colonel Johnson in an attempt to dislodge the Confederates. The weather at this time was very cold, and in several different written observations, the wind was an extremely powerful factor in this battle. Through some mismanagement and miscommunications, the U.S. troops were not coordinated properly and were unable to swiftly conduct a flank attack on Johnson. One incident is Milroy's men were able to secure one of the clearings. Using the fallen timber and stumps as a solid point of attack, the Confederates were unable to move the Union troops out of that area until they moved an artillery battalion into the area and blasted them out with round shot and canister ammunition. The Union troops were not in contact with their own artillery, so were unable to call in counter-battery fire, leaving the infantry vulnerable until they retreated later in the day. That's just one example of the miscommunications where the infantry and the artillery weren't talking. A Confederate soldier named John S. Robson from the Confederate 52nd Virginia Infantry wrote a book called How a One-Legged Rebel Lives, the Reminiscence of the Civil War, the Story of the Campaigns of Stonewall Jackson as Told by a High Private in the Foot Cavalry. That is a mouthful for a book title, guys. On pages 20 and 21, he detailed some actions that Johnson performed during this battle. He says, and I quote, I had a splendid position in this battle and could see the whole fight without having to take any part in it. And I remember how I thought Colonel Johnson must be the most wonderful hero in the world. As I saw him at one point, where his men were hard-pressed, he snatched a musket in one hand and a swinging a big club in the other, he led his line right up among the enemy, driving them headlong down the mountain, killing and wounding many with the bayonet and capturing a large number of prisoners. Someday I'm going to get somebody with a cool voice to do these voiceovers for those voices, guys. By afternoon of December 13th, Milroy had gotten nowhere with his attack. Realizing the predicament he was in, Milroy withdrew back to Cheap Mountain, and Johnson and his men celebrated a victory. The total U.S. casualties were 137 men, while the Confederates suffered 146 casualties. After the initial celebration of their victory, the Confederate command promoted Colonel Johnson to Brigadier General, and he was given the nickname Allegheny. This concludes the battles involved as what is known in West Virginia campaign. Next week, we'll switch areas and go back to July of 1861 to start our journey through the battles of the Manassas campaign. While I'm trying to do these battles in chronological order, there were so many different campaigns going on simultaneously, I believe it is easier for everyone to follow if I don't jump around too much. I want to go through all the related battles and then go to a different area back to the beginning to cover those battles. Any feedback would be great, though. If you have a different idea on how to do this, I'd like to hear it. Please respond below or send me a message. Next week, we'll talk about the first battle of the Manassas Campaign, Hoax Run at Falling Waters, West Virginia, Berkeley County, July 2nd, 1861. Until then, take care.